Hello kitties! Another video from the uh, Angry Photographer here. I'm going to do a lens review. Um, I'll be the first person on earth to review this lens. I know there actually exists a review of this Nikkor lens back from the, uh, the uh, late 1970s, but there exists no review online of this lens, YouTube or otherwise. Now you can go to mirror.com and you can find a tiny blurb about what this lens is, but it's not a review, nor have they ever had it, or shot it, or reviewed it. So, uh, also, uh, two other reasons I wanted to review this lens is that uh, A, that uh, nobody's ever reviewed this lens before, and B, Ken Rockwell uh, is a lying dog about this lens. Not only did he uh, say something totally untrue about it, he actually, on this page, on this lens, says it's under construction. He's never had this lens, he's never touched it, he lied about it. It's like a less than a quarter of a paragraph mention of this lens, so even he's never reviewed this lens. Of course, some of his reviews are total lies, so... Doo -doo -doo. Let's see it. First time ever seen or reviewed ever since the 1970s, and obviously they didn't have the internet back then. Here we go, the Nikkor all-metal lens hood. This is Nikon's sharpest ever fisheye. It's a 16mm f3.5 with an all-metal lens hood, made back in 1979. Superseded by the 16mm f2.8, a year and a half later. And this is the mystery magic lens of uh, Nikon. Now, Ken review, it, Ken, uh, Ken uh, Rockwell, uh, Captain Doofus himself, said that... Uh, uh, this lens is not good for use on a DX camera. Bullshit! Not only is this the fastest, I mean, excuse me, the sharpest uh, fisheye Nikkor, um, it's also supremely divine, perfect 20 millimeter roughly equivalent for DX. I've shot, shot it plenty on DX cameras, perfect for FX. It's Nikon's sharpest FX fisheye. It's built like a friggin' tank, and it's got a... It's got a piece of magic in it! Uh, the current 16mm actually uh, has um, replaceable filters that uh, fit on the back, which are a total pain in the crotch, and if they were to ever to come loose. Um, you also can't actually use the lens without a, at least a neutral filter, but if they were ever to come loose, they would uh, screw up your light box for obvious reasons. So, let's uh, shine a little light on this one, and let's... Uh, get the light on so we could show you here we have a built-in right here on the lens we have internal R60, R50, I mean uh, O56, orange 56 and yellow 48 filters. I'm going to tell you in a second why that's pretty neat. Here we go doop doop and doop so we have a selector here for four settings R60, orange 56 that's red 60, by the way. Orange 56, yellow 48, and N for neutral, zero, nothing. So let's switch her back. Boom, boom, boom. And let's turn her light off. Why is this important? It's great for monochrome. I know you're thinking, well, I can do monochrome on any of my color pictures in Photoshop. Why would I want to shoot in monochrome? Yeah. Well, the reason for that is, kitties is that all the little Photoshop tricks in the world can't bring out really awesome ah, magical cloud details. You actually get the awesome dramatic gothic clouds. <laughs> yeah, I've had some caffeine. Those uh, dramatic clouds um, in Photoshop. So what you do is you go into your picture setting and you change from neutral or standard, whatever have you, you have set on your current uh, Nikon, and you change it to monochrome. So you can shoot, you can actually change the dramatic effect of your uh, monochrome uh, shots and get those dramatic, gothic, stark, ominous cloud pictures that people go, Oh my god, that's so awesome, how did you do that? My clouds never look that way in my pictures. It's also great for just getting really awesome, uh, contrasty, and uh, very great picture effects in camera. You know, not every picture has to be molested in Photoshop. And in this one particular instance, when it comes to getting dramatic clouds, there are other techniques. And uh, there are uh, Photoshop plugins for getting kind of close to that. But I can, you know, grab it right here in the lens. Uh, so this lens is awesome. It's Nikon's sharpest fisheye. And uh, 
I'm the first person in the world to review this lens. I mean, I, I know there's a review back somewhere in the 1970s. This lens basically only existed for a couple years. Um, honestly enough, it's a rather cheap, and they don't pop up. It's a rather rare lens, but it does pop up from time to time on eBay. I think there's currently a couple listed. Uh, typically, they sell for $400, but why buy this one? It's a superior construction. A lot of them are AI conversions. You can actually tell because the knurling, instead of like the little uh, rectangles we have here, they're little uh, tiny diamonds. That's why you can tell it's an AI lens. And if it's uh, got a, uh, I mean, a, a non-AI lens, if it has diamonds, this one came from the factory as uh, AI. But uh, if it has a AI uh, rear mount and the diamonds, then it's been a conversion. Someone's converted it from non-AI to AI, which is no big deal. Someone did a $40, $30 conversion on it. But you have this wonderful four, uh, well, three filter, excuse me, three filter selector here for getting dramatic black and white effects. So what makes this lens so awesome, other than the fact that I'm the first person in the world to review it? Um, great in-lens filters. It's the sharpest fish eye. It's built like a friggin' tank. It is just damn sharp, and it is the fucking cat's ass for use on DX. Contrary to Peckerhead, uh, who uh, he didn't he didn't even write a review. If you actually type it, and I thought I'd take a look see if he reviewed this. He's got a review of everything, even if he's never had it or shot it. But uh, even he himself didn't go so far as to say anything about this lens, other than to say. This lens is not good for use on DX. It's a, this entire page uh, on this lens is uh, basically uh, two sentences. So there's no review on this lens at all out there. There, there uh, is a mention on mirror.com, but yeah, I know I flapped my lips, whatever. The point being is that for 400 bucks, this lens is superior because it's the sharpest. It's pretty damn cheap. It's actually cheaper than uh, if you get an AI or AIS manual focus 16 millimeter. Because it's built like a fucking, it's built like a friggin' tank. It will last several lifetimes if you take care of it. Obviously, I love that neat little. I love those old metal lens hoods back from the 70s. I mean, this actually took quite a while. It's even got a little gasket there. It's got felt lining. Um, for 400 bucks, you get one with built-in filters. You don't have to take the lens off like on the 16 millimeter AI to uh, change the filter. And I don't want a filter sitting on the back of my lens that could fall into my light box. Hello. Um, so it's just incredible. So it's, this is Nikon's Mystery Magic Lens. First review either on YouTube or on the internet. First review ever. <whistles> Not say, there are written reviews that exist out there. God knows where they disappear to in some dusty old photography magazine back from the late 70s. But this is the only and first actual true review um, on this lens. So... I gotta give it, give it a uh, give it a huge shout out and <laughs> top recommendation. Uh, good luck finding it. <laughs> there are a couple out there right now. Um, just remember what I said: four hundred bucks. It is just it's the cat's ass for use on DX and on FX. It's just also the cat's ass. Sticking my camera in monochrome and getting some puffy clouds and uh, cranking on that red or yellow filter getting some dramatic monochrome effects that I cannot do in Photoshop. You can get kind of close to it, but you can't do it. Um, getting it in camera. I mean, that's just awesome. So you got an awesome lens here with a built -in, uh, three, uh, three built-in filters. And I guess I've said too much about it. Um, I'm just actually happy to do this review for you. And uh, I love this lens, and it will never part from my fingers. Um, <laughs> Um, so I'm, I'm, I should have done this uh, lens some time ago, but then I thought, well, somebody's written about this lens, and I searched, and I was like, no, nobody's, nobody's, there's nobody, there is no review that exists on this lens. There's a mention of it, there's a mention of its tech specs, but nobody's actually ever, nobody has it or has reviewed it. There are a couple pictures if you were to type in images on this lens, there are a couple people that have it. Most of them are in Japan, and like I said it wasn't made for very long, so... If you're interested in a fisheye that is also the cat's ass for use on DX, contrary to what uh, Cockwell, I, I mean Rockwell said, um, <laughs> look into the Nikkor 16mm f3.5 because it is awesome. <laughs> you like this review? You always drop me two bucks or tell me to go jump off a cliff and uh, 
Thanks for watching, alright? I'm working hard on the website. By the way, I'm uploading content like crazy. Um, page number one and two and so forth will be up next week, and catch you later.